81 degrees out. May or may not be headed up to the marina to take our boat out. So I had gotten a request on how to install or upgrade a radio. And in this case, it's a 2003 C-Ray Sundancer, but this is applicable for a lot of other C-Ray models and a lot of boats in general. Now I've already done the upgrade and installation on this particular boat, um, our boat and this radio and everything, but I can still kind of give you a high level overview exactly of what you need to do uh, to make this happen. So you're just gonna have to bear with me. It's not gonna be an actual install walkthrough, but I'm gonna take the radio out and, uh, and show you guys how to do it. All right, so here's the new radio in our boat, and this is a Garmin Fusion MSRA70NSX. Uh, the NSX on this radio means it has NEMA 2000 Sirius XM satellite radio. So whether you do or, or don't have the NSX, if you've got an MSRA70, this, this would be applicable for you. And a lot of other Fusion, Garmin, and, and any other brand radios are all really similar. So I've already got it unscrewed, so I'm just going to pull it out here. I got the breaker turned off just because you never know. I don't want to bump anything and get any surprise shocks or zaps or anything like that. There's a lot of wires back in here, so bear with me. Um, I'm going to start from on the back, looking at the back of the radio from left to right, and most of these are labeled the antenna. So this is the AM FM antenna. Um, it really just pulls out of the old radio and plugs right in to this radio. I don't use the AM FM hardly ever, but you might as well plug it in. Um, the connectors are all usually the same, so you don't have to change anything out or anything like that. Next is the Sirius XM tuner. Um, that cable just plugs in and it goes to the Sirius XM tuner, which then gets plugged into the Sirius satellite antenna, which I have mounted close to the compass in our helm. Um, I had to run the wire all the way, kind of snake it through the boat up through the helm. So that was a little bit of a project. So, um, you know, if you want Sirius, I already have Sirius in my truck. So... Um, I just added another radio onto our plan. We disable it in the fall when the boat comes out of the water, so we're not paying through it for it in the winter months, and then we turn it back on in the spring. All right, this next cable is a NEMA 2000 cable. Now that cable will connect your radio to any other NEMA 2000 accessories on your boat, like your chart plotter, or this particular radio is compatible with a wired remote. So it uses the NEMA 2000 network to make that wired remote connection. If you have a compatible chart plotter and you're networked with your radio, you can control your radio from your chart plotter. So they'll have, you know, play, pause, forward, um, controls like that on the radio. Or I'm sorry, on the chart plotter so you can control your radio. So it's kind of like working as a remote. Um, this next guy is the USB cable, and that is for adding in like a USB, um, an extra USB port for plugging in a phone or another USB type device. Um, so I'll show you where I've got that mounted after we get through all of these cables. Um, all right, next one is going to be, let me fish it out of here so you can see it. This is gonna be your subwoofer cable, your aux input cable, um, zone 1 and Zone 2 cables. As you can see, I'm really only using the aux input cable. So the um, aux input cable would be like if you had something that had a, a headphone output jack on it and you wanted to pass the audio from that into the radio. Um, that's on the same plug or port, uh, if you will, as this extra USB port that I've got here. So I'll show you where that's at here after we get done with the, the cable rundown so you can see um, and get an idea of how I have that set up. And if you have a subwoofer, which I don't, um, then you would use those cables. Um, I personally don't have one on this boat, so I'm not using them. All right, then this guy, this is the main cable. This is the important 
one. This is all your speakers, your power, your ignition, um, you know, and a few other wires. If you have those things, you may not use all of them. It just depends on your boat and then what your boat has, what your boat supports. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this guy so I can go through it a little easier with you guys. All right, so you can see here, these are all labeled for what they are. Amplifier, out, power, ground, zone two, you know, various speakers, things like that. Telemute, um, I believe that's for, I mean, if you get a phone call, it mutes things. Um, regulatory label. So anyway, what you've got to do on your old radio, you're going to have to cut, cut the wires off that are going to the connector on your old radio. So it's up to you if you wanna reuse the connector on your old radio, you're gonna to wanna to leave some wire left. So don't cut right up against the connector unless you think you're just gonna throw it out and you never care to see it again. That way you've got as much wire as possible here for these connectors. Um, and for the most part, you know, obviously they're labeled. You can pull up the manual for your old radio and figure out exactly which wire does what um, but like I said, most of them are labeled and they're color coded. So you can see here on the majority of these, the colors are matching up on my new radio with what the color is coming from the boat and the speakers in the boat. So that was pretty easy. And then you're going to want to get, you know, the correct gauge splices or, or butt connectors or however you want to do that. Um, I personally, you know, used an inline splice. Um, these are not weather sealed. Um, you know, if you want to use weather sealed connectors, that, that would probably depend a lot on where your radio is getting wired in at. Um, mine is obviously here behind my breaker panel, and uh, if I've got water behind this panel, I've got way bigger problems to worry about than my connectors getting some corrosion on them, and I just happen to have these. So that's what I went with. So once you get these guys all spliced in, you get all your other wires and connectors and everything like that taken care of, then you get everything plugged into your radio. Then you'll have to figure out, as in my case, how you're going to fit a smaller radio into that big hole that was left for a much older radio when the components were larger and they take up a lot more size. So that's where we have this filler bracket, adapter plate, whatever you want to call it. So I do make these. I do sell these on eBay and Amazon. Um, I'll put a link for those. Um, I've got another video that goes over this in a little more detail, a little more in depth if you need something like that. I make these for a handful of different Garmin or Fusion branded radios. So once you get everything taken care of, go ahead and stuff all these wires back into that nice lovely hole. As you can see, these screw holes are going to line up with the screw holes from my old radio. I had an old Clarion in here that I took out, so um, I made this plate to kind of fill in the blank space. And then you're going to go ahead and put your four screws in and secure it back in this panel. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll touch real quick here on a few other things. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see I have a USB port and an aux input. So we don't really use that to play music from the phone. It's more just having an extra phone charger. I usually just Bluetooth to the radio, but this gives um, me or my wife an extra place to plug in, whether, you know, iPhone or Android, whatever you're trying to charge. And if we ever did have a scenario where we wanted something with aux input, it's down there. Um, I had to make a bracket for that, so that little square bracket that's holding that guy in, um, I made that and I screwed it in there to hold that port um, because that is not a factory install or something that Seagray did or anything like that. Um, the CD changer for my Clarion used to be down here. So I took that out. Obviously, I don't want to look at that. Don't need that. Have no use for it. So um, that was a perfect place for that to go. All right, uh, out on the helm. And I apologize for the wind noise. If there's a lot of wind noise, it's pretty windy and gusty out here today. But besides that, it's a beautiful day. So up on the helm, you can see here where I used to have my remote. Now I have a new Garmin Fusion remote. So 
this guy replaced the old Clarion remote. Now this one is actually Bluetooth. The nice thing about this radio is there's no wires, no connections, no nothing like that. You just take out the old radio, old remote, and this one has an adhesive back, so you peel off the adhesive, and it just happened to fit in there perfectly, so I was really uh, happy about that. Like I said, the nice thing about this remote is the fact that it's Bluetooth, it's wireless. The installation couldn't be any easier, any simpler, or any more basic. The downside is, is it's wireless, so it's battery powered, so you are going to have to change the battery. I haven't had to change the battery yet, but at some point I probably will. And then the other downside is there's no informational display, so you can't see what song you've got going on. Uh, or any, uh, any other information about the radio. You really just got your, your forward, back, volume up, volume down, source, and play and pause, and that's it. But it's a lot cheaper, it's a lot easier to install, and it's a lot nicer than having no remote up here at all. So thanks for checking this video out, guys. See you in the next one.